Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by Mr. Muskie Charters, offering full-service guided fishing trips for walleye, muskie, bass, and sturgeon on Lake St. Clair and the Detroit and St. Clair Rivers. Booking information is online at mrmuskycharters.com. By Tri-County Logging, experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving southern and mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. We fight the battles no one hears about. We drop into the middle of firefights to rescue others. And act as one-man air traffic control towers. We're the ones who go before all others. Join the fight. Hey everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. Thank you so much for joining us this week. A lot of good stuff on this week's program. We're gonna kick things off with the turkey season that just started this past weekend. I was able to get out with a good friend and a first time hunter. We had a great hunt. You won't wanna miss that story. Lots of cool footage there. Then Jordan Brown is gonna take us to the woods to do a little morel mushroom hunting, show you what you can do to find more of those and a good recipe as well. And if you're a walleye fisherman, we're gonna show you what the DNR does on pretty much a yearly basis to make sure we have fishable numbers of walleye in lakes across the state of Michigan. So much good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. From the Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's the love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988, offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO, the number two, Alta. By Polar Craft Boats, offering riveted and welded boats for the outdoor enthusiast. Whether you're targeting fish or waterfowl, Polar Craft Boats have several models to choose from that keep you high and dry. For more information, polarcraft.com. by Angler Quest Pontoons. Angler Quest is a Michigan-based company building boats designed for comfort and fishing functionality. For more information, anglerquestpontoons.com. Well, the first morning of the season was looking pretty good so far. I was joining longtime turkey hunter and turkey call manufacturer Seth McCullough and a good friend of the family, Taylor Erfmeyer, on her first hunt. So far, the birds were doing just what we had hoped, but would they come all the way in for Taylor's 20 gauge? Well, only time will tell.
birds made it to about 60 yards and, for whatever the reason, were not interested in coming any closer. We tried and tried, but no luck. The only thing we heard in response to our calls were the fans blowing in the nearby orchards in hopes of saving some apples on a frosty morning. Set up kind of bad this morning. Honestly, we we had a perfect setup. They came right across the field, but we had the blind set up so that it's the sun is shining right into our blind. And um, anyway, I think they just got nervous. They got up 60 yards. We ranged them at, and uh, I mean, some turkey guns for sure you can do that. But with this 20 gauge that Taylor's shooting, I. Um, I'd like them to be about 40, 45 at the most, so. I thought they were gonna be hot and come right in, but they obviously, uh, I, I'm pretty sure they could see into the blind, so that, that was the issue, so, you know. Uh, but they're still out there. Yeah, they're still out there, and there's another Tom floating around somewhere, so we're gonna be a little bit patient and see if we can, uh, see if we can get them to come in later on. So the lone Tom Seth had mentioned did come give us a look. Made it almost to within range, but spooked as well. Now Seth makes a line of calls called Bully's Turkey Calls. He worked his magic, and against all odds, that bird came back out into the field, skirted around us, but did seem to be interested in our decoys. Now we waited to see what he was going to do. He's done. He's dead now. <laughs> what do you see, young lady? Uh, I don't even know. <laughs> Seth, tell me what just happened. That well, was pretty sweet. <laughs> so, on our first setup, we didn't have this window closed right. We had two nice birds come in in the morning. This guy was all the way across the wood line, um, across the field from us, and we waited for him to go away after the first set. We fixed the window. This guy ended up coming through the woods, back around by himself. He was scared of the other two. He dinked around and dinked around and came in and we had, had him in range at one point. He got nervous, he turned around, then he came back out and then he walked all the way around the decoys and then came back into range and Taylor plugged him. Yeah. First time turkey hunting, right? Yeah. That was awesome, you did great. Yeah. <laughs> Did your heart get beaten a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sure he was going to come, but then he finally turned. Yeah, and and I like, thought he was going to go straight across the field. I was like, well, I was assuming he was walking across the field. Yeah, you could see. And then, see all, the, then yeah. all of a sudden, then all of a sudden, Jimmy's like, okay, get your beat on him. I'm like, what? <laughs> What's going on out there? <laughs> 
Spring turkey hunting is as good as it gets. One of my favorite things is that whether you're pulling the trigger, calling, running a camera, or just along on the hunt, every person has a great time, and it doesn't really matter which role you play. If you're on the hunt, everyone shares in the experience. As excited as Taylor was, I can tell you Seth and I, we were just as happy to be walking up on a down bird on a beautiful spring morning as she was. Good two-year-old. Nice big beard. Nice big old beard on him. He's got a five eighths, three quarter inch spurs, something like that. Nice. Definitely a two year old bird. See the beard there. Yep, there's the beard. Oh yeah. Well, that's got to be. How do you figure? Nine or ten? Nine or ten for sure. Yeah. How long have you known Seth? Um. I don't know, for a long time, since I was really little. Yeah? Yeah. So kind of friend of the family? Yeah. And you heard him tell all these turkey hunting stories over the years. Yeah. <laughs> how did he, did you want to come? Did he con you into coming? How did that Yeah, all work? no, I wanted to come. We were kind of planning on coming, like going hunting anyways, but then we picked a weekend and went. <laughs> Give me your decoy set up here, Seth. What you kind of, what are you trying to hope to do here today? So, I figured the birds were either going to come out of this path right here, or from across the field, which they came across the field. So what I did is I put the Jake in a lay down hen facing this way, and I put the other hen facing that way. So my idea is we want these birds to try to catch up with what we got here. So if we face them this way, I feel like the birds are more likely to uh, hang, up. hang up because they're thinking maybe these birds are gonna come to them, which is the natural way things are supposed to be. If I put them facing this way, then hopefully it pulls them through. And then a lot of times I'll put the birds over here, but in the situation we had this morning, we couldn't really do that. So I like them to have to come through the deep, you know, through the, through me to get to the decoys. The morning was pretty outstanding. Lots of birds, lots of action, some close calls, and then it all came together like we were hoping. Seth has taken a lot of first timers out and continues to do so because he wants to see new people experience turkey hunting and just because it's a ton of fun as well. Another great part of early success is heading to the local breakfast spot for some after the hunt celebration. Good luck to all the hunters who still hold a tag and thanks to Taylor for letting two old guys tag along on her hunt here in Michigan's Out of Doors. For our next segment on this week's show, I was in southern Michigan with a couple of good friends on the hunt for some of the first morel mushrooms of the year. It's a beautiful day out here in southern Michigan. We're out on some state land property hunting the elusive and flavorful black morel. Uh, these mushrooms are really hard to find, but once you figure them out, they're really not that hard. Uh, as you can see, we're in a stand of popple, and that's the key thing for finding these blacks. Um, they, they love pole size to softball size popple trees, and they grow right tight to the trees or in between. Uh, we also brought pretty much a whole kitchen set to make a nice little fire um, and make my favorite dish on these is a morel mushroom sauce. So we're gonna try to whip up that here um, if we can't find enough of them. Black morels are often spread out over a larger area, but there's often small areas within these spots where the mushrooms tend to congregate and you can usually find them there every year. So the white morels, of course, they grow under apple trees and uh, dead elm, where the blacks, they typically will grow in the exact same spots in the mix of all these popple, um, right down to the exact tree, uh, specific locations. And you'll get a big stand of popple, and you might actually have six to eight locations in the mix of that that are hot spots. Um, so I typically focus on those really hot spots and of course every year you venture out 
try to find new ground. So we've just found a little cluster. Um, I haven't picked the spot yet this year, so we just came to a fresh location and sure enough, like, oh, actually there's a bigger one right there. I can see two, three, we just picked six uh, mushrooms here in this little spot. Um, so we're just gonna go through this whole area where I haven't looked yet this year and hopefully we can pick some more mushrooms. I can tell you right now, we walked by a lot, so you can't find them all. Um, there's always gonna be mushrooms out here. If you do see a lot of people, um, I, I wouldn't ever get discouraged. Typically, they don't know your spot, or if you you know do find a spot, um, they're not gonna find them all. So, I mean, I can, you could hunt in the mix of a crowd of people and you're still gonna find mushrooms if you are dedicated, you know, put the work in. Like right now there's there's a mushroom hunter over, you know, probably 100 yards away from us, but I can already tell he's moving really fast through the woods, so that's another thing, maybe slow down, uh, take your time, you know, pack a little snack and just spend some time out in the woods. I think it's key to use a, a sharp knife and to actually leave the bottom half of the mushroom in the ground. It allows a cleaner mushroom pick. Well, it's the second week of April, out here with a couple of good buddies tonight. Um, honestly, I was just going to do the trip kind of for fun and thought I'd throw the camera in last minute. But we've already found a bunch of mushrooms. Uh, not sure how many, at least 50, probably more, but we've been kind of dinking around getting some shots. But uh, having a great time and are getting ready to start a great meal. My buddy Frankie's going to be uh, whipping up kind of a meal out here in the woods, which is a little bit different. So to see how that goes, we got. I don't know, maybe two hours left of daylight, so we're gonna keep hunting for a little bit, um, but then we're gonna work on dinner, so should be fun. So far, so good. I typically don't ever rinse them. I don't like to add water to the mushroom. It really absorbs most of it, and that's why you wanna pick clean. Uh, just practice clean picking uh, you're always going to get a little bit of dirt in, in mushrooms, but you can't get away from that. So, biggest thing is getting out any large bugs, slugs. If you have a dirty mushroom, don't put it in your bag of, of clean ones. Try to separate it because it'll kind of ruin a whole batch. So, first off, we're going to sear some garlic, shallots, and some herbs. Um, then reduce the mushrooms down. Then after they're cooked, uh, we're going to add the brandy, burn off the alcohol and the brandy, then add the heavy whipping cream. Uh, once, once you add the heavy whipping cream, you just let everything reduce, a slow simmer. Um, you can do it quicker, but it just needs to you know, reduce down and get a little thicker and we'll get that sauce consistency. So we're just going to keep the duck simple. We're going to olive oil, season it up, a little garlic powder, garlic salt, salt and pepper, and pretty much just sear that. We want to, you know, keep that medium rare. So here we have mallard that we actually, the three of us, harvested in late season over a jasmine bed of rice with the mushroom sauce. Now this mushroom sauce goes good with the rice and the duck. It really, you know, makes the whole meal, but uh, it was all cooked over the fire. 
And I think we're uh, gonna have a good feast here. <laughs> Anytime you can have a meal over a fire, it's usually pretty good. But this one is going to be tough to beat. It was a great afternoon in the timber with a couple of good friends here in Southern Michigan. Well, if you are a walleye fisherman here in the state of Michigan, what we're gonna do right now is show you what the DNR does on pretty much a yearly basis to make sure that we have fishable numbers of walleye across our great state. A couple of weeks back found me on the banks of the Muskegon River as the DNR was knee deep in their walleye egg take program. I was lucky enough to jump on their boat and learn a little bit more about this program. Well, we've got these long booms out here and with electrodes hanging off of them and we've got a negative, the negative is on the bottom of the boat and so when you drop those electrodes in the water and turn the generator on, it puts out a field of electricity that will stun the fish and allow us to net them. Okay, and then how long do they say stun for? Uh, a couple minutes okay. and, and uh, Depending on the current, that can make it challenging sometimes, but uh, um, yeah, it, it is usually non-lethal. I mean, occasionally a fish will take it hard and not survive, but for the most part, it's non-lethal. So that's one of the best parts of this type of sampling. So just a small run up the river from the Pine Street access is the Croton Dam. The shocking boat that we were aboard nets the fish and brings them back down river. Mark told me more about how this all works. Yeah, so today we're doing a walleye egg take on the Muskegon River. Uh, we're about a mile below Croton Dam here at Pine Street, and we've been working between Croton Dam and the Pine Street access here to collect walleye. And our uh, staff from Wolf Lake and Platte River hatcheries are, are spawning the walleye. And they will take the fertilized eggs back to the hatcheries uh, this afternoon um, for they can uh, hatch them in the hatchery. So they're in the hatchery for a couple of weeks, uh, and at, after they hatch out, they're called fry and then they'll take the fry to uh, a bunch of fertilized ponds all around the lower peninsula. And in the ponds, we uh, grow, uh, try to grow good plankton populations to feed the young walleye. And they'll spend about six weeks in the ponds and then we'll harvest them out of the ponds. And at that point, they're typically an inch and a half, maybe two inches. And then we'll stock them in lakes and rivers all around the state. Correct, we've got the hatchery folks tell us we've got uh, all the ripe females we need today. So now we're looking for some suckers? Yep, looking for some suckers for a little research project. It's being conducted by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Well, we were headed back to shore with all the walleye we would need. This program is very important for sportsmen across the state. Well, this is a good thing for sportsmen because uh, a lot of our waters don't get natural reproduction uh, for walleye. So a lot of our inland lakes, for example, um, if we didn't stock walleye, there wouldn't be any there to catch. And so we stock them so that anglers can go out and catch them. Walleye are very popular game fish. A lot of people like to catch them. A lot of people like to eat them. And, uh, and so we like to keep the lakes uh, well stocked with walleye. Getting to see this process up close is really pretty impressive. It has no harmful effects on the fish in this system and is done for many other species as well. We stock many different species of fish. Um, probably the, the majority of the fish we stock are cold water fish. So that would be Chinook salmon, coho salmon, you know, in, in the Great Lakes, and then uh, uh, steelhead, uh, brown trout, and rainbow trout in the streams and, and in some lakes. Uh, we also stock lake trout in, in uh, a lot of inland lakes. And then also, uh, you know, a little lesser known species like lake sturgeon. We have some lake sturgeon, uh, sturgeon stocking programs. Uh, we also stock uh, muskellunge, you know, Great Lakes muskies in a number of different lakes. So yeah, we, our hatcheries raise a variety of fish. And basically the, the primary reason is for anglers to go catch. Fish stocking in Michigan officially started back in the, uh, in the late 1800s with the Michigan Fish Commission. So since that time, walleye have been stocked to some degree, you know, throughout the state. So yeah, we've got a long, you know, 130, 140, maybe even 150 year, you know, stocking tradition, uh, you know, fish stocking tradition here in Michigan. I was really surprised just how many walleye were in the system. Now we were here before the opener and Mark said that many of these fish will be gone before the opener hits just a week or so back. You know, we're here on the Muskegon River today and uh, the Muskegon River does have a year-round population of walleye so you could come here anytime and, and try to catch walleye. 
Um, a lot of the walleye, though, live in Muskegon Lake and, and, and run up the river from Muskegon Lake. And a fair number of this population also lives in Lake Michigan. And adult walleye will roam a long ways. And so, for example, walleye from the Muskegon River that were tagged here have shown up in a lot of different places over in Wisconsin, uh, over you know on the north shore of Lake Michigan in the UP. Even a few of them have wound up over in Lake Huron. So they, they can go a long way. Uh, we estimate the walleye spawning run in the Muskegon River at about 40,000 annually, maybe even a little more than that in some years. A real good walleye fishery over the next uh, six weeks will be the pierheads. Um, a lot of the pierheads like Whitehall, Muskegon, Grand Haven, um, even Ludington, Manistee, you know, those ports, those piers will provide a real good walleye fishery for these spent, uh, you know, these females that are post-spawn now and they've, you know, they're heading out to, um, you know, to feed up again and regain the energy they lost from uh, spawning. Thanks to all that made today possible. And if you're an inland walleye angler in our state, well, you now know just where many of these fish come from here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Michigan Out of Doors this week. If you missed part of this week's show or maybe last week's show, you can always check us out online. We have full episodes of the show there on our website. We're also on most of the social media sites if you want to see what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you're ever on YouTube, you can subscribe to our channel there. Get an email every time we post something new. And we will be posting a lot of new stuff over the next few weeks as we do some more turkey hunting on the show, as well as a lot of good spring fishing. There is just so much happening right now in the great state of Michigan. Get out and enjoy it. And if we don't see you in the woods, and if we don't see you on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by. Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit greenstonefcs.com. By Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in southwest Michigan and northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at greenmarkequipment.com. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want to fire away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above